the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on this second Sunday of this Advent season. So let us take a moment to prepare ourselves as we acknowledge our sins. Let's open our hearts and all that we are to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to establish your eternal kingdom of peace and justice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you stand at the gates of everlasting light and abolish the darkness of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again at an unknown hour to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let, let us, us see your kindness and grant us your, your salvation. salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, Lord let, let us see, see your, your kindness, kindness and, and grant, grant us your, your salvation. salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, Lord let, let us see, see your kindness, kindness and, and grant, grant us, us your, your salvation. salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, Lord let, let us see your kindness and, and grant us your salvation. salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, <clears throat> that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, 
and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so on this second Sunday of Advent, we hear the beginning of the gospel, the very first words of Mark's gospel, which said, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's interesting when we make a connection to the beginning of the first book of sacred scripture, the book of Genesis, which also began in a very similar way. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so as a purposefulness in Mark's writing, again, we consider it to be the oldest of the Gospels, and the first one, and very short and very much to the point, and always Jesus on the go. But right in the beginning, that we don't have a narrative of the infancy narratives like Matthew and Luke, but we have these words of Mark, that again, there's a purposefulness about that expression in the beginning, or the beginning of the Gospel, which is simply to tell us that what he is about to write, what is he about, he's about to tell us in the gospel is as momentous as the moment of creation that we heard in the book of Genesis. And following that, that the pages would unfold of Mark's gospel that all that happened with Jesus would be the beginning of God's plan for salvation, that rescue mission that ever since our first parents of Adam and Eve that we heard about on Friday in the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, that, that first, the first parents who, who led us into that original sin. And so this great rescue mission. And also that simple call for us, not only the beginning of what Jesus did to lead to salvation through his life, death, and resurrection, but also was a call for all of us as disciples to continue what was begun. And so there's constantly a sense of beginning as we take charge of the call and the responsibility of discipleship. And so always on this second Sunday of Advent, 
we join all four Gospels that bring us John the Baptist, this great herald, the last prophet of the Hebrew Scriptures of the Old Testament. And it's interesting that it said that the, the Gospel said there was a crowd streaming from Jerusalem to be immersed in that water of the Jordan River and attracted to John's message in many different ways. And not just a, a recitation of their wrongdoings, but perhaps a communal kind of demonstration that people really, they really looking for a life that could be better, a life that could be more wholesome and peaceful and just than what they were experiencing. And so is the echo of that vision of Isaiah in the first reading this morning, the vision of a world without any kind of divisions or barriers or injustice, but a world of peace. And using the symbolism of the valleys being filled in and mountains leveled is that anything that would be an obstacle and all things would be of equal would come about. All that, would pl that had plagued people would be smoothed out and would be cured. And so it's in that goodness that we hear this great pronouncement of John the Baptist and Isaiah in the first reading of the, the very power of God that is about the power of love. And that's uh, specifically what our salvation is all about, is connecting with the power of God's love. It was not a God who broke into our human history as a warrior, but as the first reading said, as a shepherd. And so it's in that goodness that we, again, hear the call of John the Baptist at this beginning of a new church year, at the beginning of this season of Advent. And it was a call, as he said, prepare the way of the Lord, of a radical open-mindedness for all of us, a metanoia, a willingness to stretch, be stretched by God's word and by God's grace from our typical kind of mindsets or our patterns of ways of doing things or even the fact that we've heard these readings and as we begin a new church year over and over again. But how do we enter into these days of preparation for Christmas, but also entering into this whole year with an open-mindedness of new possibilities, which is what God's grace is all about, new possibilities for all of us. And so we're invited early on in this Advent season to again, like in Isaiah, dream about a life that can be for ourselves, for our families, for our schools, for our workplaces, for our country, for our world, for all relationships, to be of barrier-free, a very inclusive, of one of respect of all of life and justice and goodness and peace. And so we're invited to be able to allow that creative power of God's grace to work within us and among us because God always just sees in all of us such great potential. And so it was last Sunday's gospel that Jesus says, watch and be alert to that very call and the presence of the possibilities and know that whatever's going on in our lives and our world, no matter what our challenges, our joys, that we're all asked to, asked again to be open to the power of God working with us and among us, the very goodness of Christmas that was the beginning of our salvation, the beginning of our really believing and being able to be more alert to the very presence of God in our everyday lives. And so as everything changed with that giftedness of the incarnation, so we always hold out every one of us can also change to be more effectively God's people. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son of God, our Lord, who and was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Gracious and loving God, Realizing that we are called to witness your presence to our world, we now offer these petitions. For all members of the church, 
May God work in us for a greater conversion of mind and heart in order to be better instruments of God's love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the retired priests of our diocese, that they may experience peace and joy in their retirement for the countless years of service they have provided. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all ministers to people of faith, including Pope Francis and Bishop Morlino, may be voices of good tidings and speak in a strong voice of the glory revealed in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and local communities, and may those who lead them be instruments of healing, justice, equality, and respect for the lives of those they govern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer illness and disabilities of any kind may know and believe in the presence of the Lord in their lives and God's healing compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Esther Call, who we remember today, may she and all who have died find fulfillment of their hope of eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a moment of silence of our hearts, let us offer our own concerns to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus. Fill us with courage as we turn away from sin toward lives of grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare now to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's minister his word of peace to those near. Peace be with you, Anne. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Danny. Thank you. Peace be with you, Will. Thank you. Lamb of God. Who's take, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that, you that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass has ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. On behalf of Monsignor Larry Bakke, thank you for sharing in our worship service this morning. I am Ann Maastricht of St. Albert the Great Parish in Sun Prairie. My son, Will Maastricht, and Danny Blackowitz were our acolytes. It is a pleasure for us to join our former pastor, Monsignor Larry, in this special ministry of the Television Mass. The Ministry of Music for our worship was provided by Val Thomas of St. Pius X Parish in Cambridge. The ministry that enables the deaf to worship with us was provided by the interpretation of Michelle Guyette, and closed captioning was provided by the Apostolate. Our ability to share in sacred liturgy each Sunday morning is because of the generosity and social concern of the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV for persons with disabilities, the elder elderly, and homebound of all faiths. Next Sunday, our presider will be Father Christopher Klesman, who is deaf himself and is the director of the Postulate for the Deaf of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. We welcome him to our diocese and this television mass. Do have a beautiful week, and may the Lord guide you in whatever you do, and may your Advent be full of blessings and happiness.